Lush and I'm inside Hub Culture's pavilion. I think we're calling it a pavilion here in Times Square. I'm delighted to be joined by Rabbi Abraham Berkowitz. Thank you for coming along. It's wonderful to walk by. I'm familiar with Hub Culture from different spots in the world and to randomly be walking by and see friends and have this conversation. I think it's a great way to get people off the street to think in a few minutes, how can I be, make a difference to the world's most pressing challenges? So tell me about some of the work or some of the things that you've been thinking about. How do people respond differently to a world's challenge if they're standing here versus to what you see when you travel to India, for example? So I, I was a rabbi for, for the last 18 years. For 10 years, I helped rebuild the Jewish community in Russia. And after the terrorist attack in the Taj and the Oberoi Hotel, there was also a Jewish center, a Chabad house, that was destroyed in Mumbai. And I went to rebuild it. At the same time, the movie Slumdog Millionaire came out. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to see a slum. I could not believe that I was seeing human beings living in those conditions. Mm. I mean, I'm a boy from the West. And even in the, you know, I lived in watching the redevelopment of Russia after the fall of communism. I never saw such inequality, subhuman life and living mm. of fellow human beings. And when that hit me in the face, I realized I have to take a responsibility not only to, of course, always be concerned about my own community, the Jewish people, and rebuilding wherever we are, but where can I help make a difference and an impact for all of humanity. And what I realized is that if you have a solution, if you find a solution, if it works for a hundred people, mm. and it's not very expensive, you can work for a billion people. And we are very privileged to live in the West and have, we're not worried about most of the you know, Millennium Development Goals. We're not, the SDGs, we have water, we have access to education, mm. to, to, to sanitary toilets, and all the other issues that in the r billions of people don't have access to. So I started to seek out organizations and programs where I can not only do something myself, but I can make partnerships between major NGOs, governments, and industry. So what so happens in India? What are some of the things that you're involved with there? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm an advisor and part of a foundation called the TGELF, the, the Global Leadership and Education Foundation. That's, uh, there's a a leading businessman, business family, the Kemka family, so Shiv Kemka, I got to know him through this work. He trains the best young leaders in India to create programs, projects, and initiatives that find solutions for millions of people in many of the SDGs. So we were behind uh, last year's Global Citizen Festival mm -hmm. in central Bombay. That tell me what that was. So it's similar to the one that we have in Central Park. We mm -hmm. have all these um, you know, world famous singers. But here in America, I feel the biggest names come on stage. People get a free concert and they tweet. Right. But it doesn't necessarily translate into action. There's more mm -hmm. awareness. But it's not what's called in Hebrew tachlis. Tachlis is the bottom line. That mm -hmm. someone go the from... The stops here. Exactly. That someone transition from defecating in the field to starting to use a, a clean toilet. Mm -hmm. In India, they make sure that every single participant in the square actually mm -hmm. goes and volunteers somewhere within 20 miles of their own home. Mm -hmm. They can help someone that either never had access to a book and learn how to read or train people how to use a get access to a clean toilet and then there's the training behind it mm -hmm. so it's so many unbelievable programs that you see if we apply these innovative american or western mm -hmm. ideas in a place like india millions of people could be lifted out of poverty another amazing organization that i work closely with is kiva mm -hmm. and i'm surprised that people don't know about it i think after wikipedia it's the second in the ngo space it's the second most used website i would probably put khan academy up there too but so this is when you put you give money or you you put money you lend money basically to somebody in a different part of the world who's doing work for the good of the people no they're right? actually building a small business okay, so you, business. you go online to kiva.org they already have 770 million dollars on in loans mm -hmm. out for you can choose any country or any field that you want and you give loans and five dollars ten dollars and mm -hmm. you, it always gets repaid so not only do i give and recycle my money again and mm -hmm. again helping businesses and people survive and make a living i've cr brought in many major partners to kiva mm -hmm. uh, on an industry level that they should get 
tens of thousands of their employees to put $25 in and then get it matched by the company. Mm -hmm. So right now, Kiva is moving into the U.S. Their next $250 million is focused on small businesses in the U.S. And it's a way that every day, take your extra change, put it on the side, and then open up a Kiva account. And you cannot just tweet. You're actually helping someone. You're actually doing something. Make a living that they can support themselves. So I wonder if one of the issues is the sustainable development goals still seem kind of big and ubiquitous and like somebody else's problem. And some of the people that I've been speaking to, it's about the world's to-do list. But actually what you're saying is that it's not just the world's to-do list, it's everybody's to-do list. It's your to-do list, it's mine. Look, consumers today have proven that if they stand up for a cause, then the companies will will change their ways. I don't think people realize, you know, how our consumption of plastic has so much damage. I think it's I think it's 30 million tons a, a year that mm. falls into the ocean and now they say that that weight is equivalent to all the fish. Right. And only 8% with all the recycling plans, it's only 8%. So, if I stop using a plastic cup every day and I mm-hmm. have my permanent coffee cup yeah. and reuse it, my f- but that has to multiply m- right. hundreds and thousands of times. There are many places that won't give up plastic bags yeah. anymore and recognize that if the consumers make one small step of a difference, yeah. overnight we can get the industries mm. to stop being bad players. And there's an issue with nudging too, right? So in the UK when they started charging five cents for the plastic bag, suddenly nobody wants to spend the five cents for the plastic bag and you actually do start reusing them. So it's, there is, an ecosystem that also can be built around that. I mean, I, th- I think one of the, there's some great films that have moved people, like Jeff Bridges did a documentary for, you know, the Pollution Coalition, the Plastic Coalition. Uh, people realizing they don't, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They just, you know, if you're not a marine biologist or you're not a, you know, out in, th- in the oceans, you don't realize mm. the damage that it's causing the entire ecosystem. And there's no borders right. when there's pollution. That means it's washing up on our shores and it's infecting everything that we eat, we wear, and where we live. And I wonder when they talk about, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm very for vaccinations because mm-hmm. we saw how many diseases were eliminated as a result of, of it. But if you want to know why in our time do we have more diseases, why don't you look at the pollution that's coming from plastic? Hey, Rabbi Workwitz, thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Times Square, and I'm Edie Lash. I love the randomness, and let's keep the conversation <laughs> going. And I let's take a pledge. Let's take a pledge. Yeah, I won't. Uh, let's something. We'll have to figure out what it is. I'll, <laughs> I'll add another twenty-five dollars to keep it. Today so will I. In honor of this conversation. Okay. Thank you.